the turnaround. How long? How long do you think? Herman Mashaba, when he was here 18 months ago, he's coming to the next conference, he said the turnaround would take many years. So it takes 10 years to build a good business. 10 years. I mean, you can get lucky, you can fail, but it takes 10 years to build a good business. But it takes less than a year to destroy a business. So what the ANC has done is destroyed. We've gone backwards. We regressed. They've destroyed almost all of our state-owned enterprises. And to turn it around is going to take five years. Infrastructure is going to take five years. We've got five years of pain to try and get back to even of what the ANC has destroyed. But it, it's an interesting point that you're calling for things today. When Zuma was elected, many business people that I engaged with said, oh, well, you know, shit, we're going to have nine real bad years. But at least after him, we should have somebody decent to come in. Have we learned our lesson? No. Have they learned their lesson? You know, everybody puts hope over experience. You know, we have had such a bad run for so long with the ANC. They've had 30 years, 30 years. They've inherited the most sophisticated economy in Africa, superb infrastructure, and they've broken it all. So when are we going to wake up and realize they're not the answer, they never will be, no matter who follows Cyril, is going to be same old, same old. We've got to get rid of these people. I see on one of your slides you, you had Franz Cronier's name. What were you going to tell you about him? <laughs> well, I had some great slides put up that Franz Cronier. Franz Cronier has done some superb research, and you've profiled him extremely well. But he's come out with some very interesting research, which, by the way, I think business is being a bit too optimistic too early. You've got to, we've got a lot of hell to go through before we can get to that optimism. But Franz Cronier has done a lot of deep research in Soweto, Ward 54. He's deep interviews of ANC voters and people who didn't vote. And some extraordinary stuff's come out. The one that blows me away most of all, and there's one issue where I said Helen Ziller, who I admire very much, was wrong. She said there could be an alliance, a coalition between the DA or the opposition and the good of the ANC. I've always said there is no good of the ANC, but Omri Mahagole has persuaded me there is. So, I'm not sure who they are, but... Um, so, his research has shown that it is possible, and here's the numbers, around 50% of ANC voters, 50% of ANC voters would support a coalition between the ANC and the DA if the ANC compromised on BEE, get rid of it, EWC, never mention it again, deregulate, get, get rid of red tape, and get rid of the policies that are holding our country back. They would support a coalition where the DA would be brought in to govern the country, because only the DA really and the opposition know how to govern, the ANC doesn't, but the ANC would sort of keep the DA fair. Isn't that amazing? Sounds good. Fif almost 50% <coughs> of, of ANC voters would support that. And would you support that? <sighs> it would make me sick. But I mean, if the, if the opposition, DA, Action SA, uh, PA, the good people, were in charge of the ministries that made the difference, finance, police, health, education, you know, it would certainly be a big step up from where we are today. G give us your high road, 2024, May the 1st, the election's over. Yep. What is the highest uh, thing that you're looking forward to at that point? And then give us your low road. So my high road is the DA gets 30%, Action X SA gets 15%, uh, Patriotic Alliance gets 10 VF Plus and Carter, and the others get another 5, 8, we're at 58 60% of the country, and the coalition boots the ANC out in toto and takes control of the country and fixes it. And it's going to be heavy lifting to fix it because the ANC are going to play the usual games of, you know, as Chris Pappas knows, of disrupting things. I mean, whether we get a free and fair election is in doubt in my mind. These are criminals. The ANC are gangsters. Low road? The low road is ANC gets 51% and... Uh, half this room is emigrates to Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. You too. I'm not leaving. You're not leaving? I'm not leaving. 
That's a change. I won't invest a cent in this country, but I'm not leaving. But my kids will go. I'll send my kids overseas. They're gone. But that is a change for you, Rob. You were saying that... I, I mm. can't live anywhere else. I love this place. Mm. It's, it's, the, it's the small stuff. It's the big stuff. It's the people. And, you know, even I think most of the ANC voters are actually loving, decent people that want the same thing as we do. What do, most, what do all people want? It's very simple. Cyril, wake up. You don't need a 500-page social compact. I'll give you the 10 bullet points people want. Me, now, right now. One, jobs. Two, tough on crime. Three, good governance. You following me? You got it? Right. You don't need to spend money on a social compact. What an idiot. Paul Mashatile, you've seen what's happening. Uh, the Behind the scenes, you've seen that even within the ANC, they're now saying Cyril's, they're not going to support him Cyril's in December. Uh, how does one not repeat the mistake of the Zuma era when you're outside of government, where maybe the next guy that you were talking Paul's about... Paul's Alex Mafia. There's a, I don't know what that means, but it's a bunch of guys that were Mafia and Alex. doesn't sound like a good guy to have next. But I've met Paul, and he's actually... You can talk to him, he's decent... Charming, polite, intelligent. But, you know, he's been raising money for the ANC for so long. And you can imagine where he's raised the money from, you know. There are people, I'm not going to say his name again. Um, there are many business people. <laughs> Thank no, you. No, I want to say discovery. There are many business people <laughs> that have given money to the DA, Action SA, and to hedge their bets, the ANC. What the hell are they doing? You know? And Paul Mishatila has been taking money from everyone. So he, there's no way he can be independent. There's no way he can pay those favors back because he, like the ANC, is owned by everyone and, and, and can make no decisions whatsoever. So Paul, if, if you have a magic wand, Paul Mishatila comes in on December 10th, which is going to happen, and he decides, he wakes up one morning, has an epiphany and says, I am going to be Gorbachev. Remember the chat yesterday, Khrushchev, Gorbachev. Gorbachev said, it can't go on anymore. We've got to change. Imagine if Paul suddenly said to the ANC, I'm going to be the Gorbachev. I'm going to reach out to the DA and Action SA and work a deal, and that's the only way the ANC can survive. But we've, we've had a government of national unity. We had that in the first couple of years of Mandela's presidency. Is that what you think could be the solution here? <laughs> oh, it makes me sick to have the ANC part of a future government. But, you know, there's still a very powerful feeling that I have, that we all have, that the country has, of the rainbow nation. You know, it was of all races working together, competent people, and we had economic growth. Could we go back to that? Could we recreate that? The problem is the SOEs are destroyed, the economy's in a mess, and we've got cadres named by the Zondo Commission. The 200 names the Zondo Commission pointed out of these rat bags that have been appointed, who are completely incompetent, who've intercepted funds and never delivered the services. Why aren't they thrown out immediately? We know who they are. I mean, I'll make, no, I won't make this point. I don't want, I'm trying not to name names. What are you doing behind the scenes, Rob? You, a year ago, you were here. It cost you a lot of money. You told me exactly what was going on. You're back again. You're saying the same thing. What are you doing behind the public veil? Because if you're so open to us, uh, and, and this is being recorded, and we're, I'm sure we're going to have hundreds of thousands of people watching it, as they did last year, behind the scenes, what are you up to? I'm not really... I'm not doing anything politically behind the scenes, okay? As a result of my speech last year, everybody reached out to me. Fakila Mbalula, the day after the speech went viral, called me directly. Hi, Fakila Mbalula here. I believe you have some grievances. We should meet. Unbelievable. I got a hell of a lot of death threats and very nasty comments made. And it was only thanks to extraordinary people like Gaten McKenzie, Musi Maimani, Omri, um, Thabo Mbeki, Enoch Gonaguana, who basically went out on social media and said, you know, we know Rob, we may not agree with him or like him, but he's not a racist, and he's come back and he's investing, leave him alone. And broadly, everyone has. So, 
you know, I survived Biz News <laughs> 1.0, what I, from my perspective, but maybe Biz, not, Biz News 2.0, then people will say, well, enough is enough of Herself too. So I need more people to stand up and start telling the truth to power. But what am I doing behind the scenes? I've, you know, I've been pulled into meeting all these people, and I came up with an idea. You know, if you're a business person and you look at an economy, you have a business hat on, you think, well, this thing's a disaster. How do I fix it? Well, firstly, you get rid of the incompetent management. Okay, that's step number one. But we've got to wait till 2024 to do that. Yeah. The s next thing is you sell off useless assets or s assets that you know are just going to go down the plug. You got to privatize all the SOEs and get on with it. Yeah. You got to restructure debt. You've got to encourage foreign direct investment to come in. You've got to encourage the locals to invest. And you've got to try and turn this thing around. Well, the ANC has no idea how to do that. So what I did was, and I'm happy to release this, but I, I created 15 principles, like a constitution. And I got a lot of people, Sarah Gon, sent to Alec, uh, Franz Cronier, Helen Ziller, uh, Omri, uh, Horsey, a lot of people I sent it to, Moosey, um, Gaten McKenzie, who commented on it, and I think we've got a perfect 15 principle constitution, okay? Then I thought, right, if everyone signs off on this, free market, de constitutional democracy, you know, unlocking human potential, all this stuff, non-racialism, that all of you would agree with, we agree on these 15 principles, all 15, unequivocally, then the next step is merge the opposition. And if you take DA, Action SA, VF Plus, and Carter, Patriotic Alliance, and the 10 most important things, and we know what they are, Cyril, remember? I told you the social compact 15 minutes ago. You know, it's jobs, tough on crime, social governance. If you take the top 10 things, if everyone agrees on the first six of the 10, we merge, put them together. And the four you don't agree on, which might be the death penalty, which might be handling illegal immigrant, you know, foreigners pouring in, uh, no border control. And those are the four. Let's deal with those later. Let's compromise. Let's work out what's right and wrong. But if we all agree on the top six, let's merge. And wouldn't it be nice over the next 20 months to have a poster all over South Africa that says, would you rather have these clowns in the current cabinet that have no idea what they're doing and are probably all criminals, or these guys, John Stenhays and, and Herman Mashaba and Gaten McKenzie, and you know, you have these competent good people sprinkled with the Horsies and Kusums and, and Vusi Timber Choirs. These guys or these guys? Well, 90% of the country would go these guys. As long as they're working together and of the 10 most important things, they agree on six. Wouldn't that be nice? Leading up to the election? Everyone working together? Sounds idealistic, though, given it's, it's not ego and power. Well, <laughs> my idea was the following. How do you get them to work together? You've got a lot of egos in the room. But you've also got people, you know, the DA has been working on our behalf, good people, since 1994. Mm. 1994. They went from Cape Town, Western Cape, and they're spreading through South Africa. Mm. They are the official opposition. Everybody should vote DA. And then we add on, everybody should vote DA. I'm wearing DA colors. Because the DA is the official opposition. And they've got a broad bench of excellent people within the DA. Now, Herman Mashaba, Michael Beaumont, great. Add them to the merger. You know, and Carter, great. Add them to the merger. Pick out a few ANC people. And then we have the best people in the country running the country. And we turn it around. And in four years' time, all the young people that have gone overseas getting incredible education and great experiences will start to return. And this economy will take off like a rocket. Paul O'Sullivan told us on the but fireside chat. I missed my point. Yeah. But to pull them together, to bang their heads together, requires one thing. Money. My idea was to raise a billion rand through a super PAC and then basically say to everyone, Unless you work together, you're not getting any money. So you've got to agree to these 15 principles. You've got to agree the six out of 10 most important things. Four we work on later. 
and then we release the funds for the election campaign, and off we go. Now, I'm, why should I do this? <laughs> I've got enough to do at the moment. But that would be the way to bang everyone together. But it's just heavy lifting. Are you getting any, any support on that? Are you getting open so ears? I've got to sh thank, um, I've got to thank Shawnee Pesh, okay? On the flight up, I mentioned this idea to him, and I said, here's my idea. Let's get a list together of all the South Africans abroad, all of them. There must be a million of them, all probably doing very well. Let's get a name of every single one, and who knows them. And let's get every single one of those people to donate 5,000 US dollars, which, depending on the exchange rate, is sort of roughly 100,000 rand, okay? Okay? So if you multiply a million people overseas by 100,000 rand, we've more than got a budget to win this election with tons to spare. I'm being very hypothetical here. You've still got to set up the structure and the new election rules for funding. But Pesci handed me a list of 120 names. I asked for 20. He gave me 120 names on the flight. Chapeau. We can do it. There are a million rich South Africans abroad. And all of us. But I wouldn't mind a bit of help from someone on this. <laughs> You'll get it. Two quick questions to end off this session before we go to the audience. Paul O'Sullivan on Tuesday evening said it was better to vote the ANC in because they won't steal as much as the little parties in the coalitions who are going to be needed to get power to a non-ANC government. Well, I don't know how Paul can say that because the record of the ANC just goes against everything he's saying. You've got the guys who are already stealing why would you want them back in? Now, I understand what he's trying to say, and it's a frustration for the DA, Action SA, and others who get, you know, 49% of some, you know, municipality, and then, and then they have to team up with some pop-up party somewhere who gets way more than they deserve to deliver their 3 4 5% to give a majority. That's why I said, everyone, let's not vote for pop-up parties anymore. Let's just back the DA and knock the ANC out of business. Or back the DA and Action SA and the three or four other names I've given you and forget the rest and knock the ANC out. That's what I think we should do. But I think Paul's wrong. And the last one was to pick up from what Ethel Trollope said. Pick a side, get involved. There we go. I agree with that. Pick a side, get involved. And there's some great, great opposition parties out there Back the DA, back Action SA, back Patriotic Alliance, VF Plus, and Carter. Mash them together, forms the opposition. We'll turn this country around. So you've got a choice of five, not just one. Oh. Okay. Uh, would you, Lucy, uh, Clive, let's get uh, Danita, let's get the, the questions going. Kusum, <laughs> one of my Thanks. cabinet ministers, <laughs> hypothetical. Thanks, Rob, for that fantastic presentation. You provided us with a hypothetical cabinet. Who would be your hypothetical president? <sighs> I was hoping no one would ask that. <laughs> um, well, if I was Mark Barnes, I wouldn't answer the question. I love Mark. He's super smart. He's committed his life to the country. Um, but he was asked on television, if you say there are hundreds of people that, people that could do a much better job, give us a few names. And he didn't. So, Mark, I'm going to have to answer this question. So, John Steenhuisen would make a fantastic president. There are many people in the DA who would do it. Mayor of, the mayor of Joburg, for example. Herman Mashaba would make a fantastic president. Musi Maimani would make a fantastic president. He's regal, he's super smart. Um, and there are many, many others. But, but we're running out of time to save this country. It, things are falling apart. It is a turnaround situation. So we need someone that will come in, who owes no favors to anyone, and who will get the job done in short order. So if you look at my cabinet of experts, but you sprinkle it with DA and Action SA people, 
I would make the vice president Jordan Hill Lewis, the mayor of Cape Town, the likey, and uh, my president would be Gaten McKenzie. I'll <laughs> tell you why. Yes, Gaten McKenzie. I, I think that's more than controversial. You got to you got to explain people, that more. Open your minds, folks. <coughs> this is a man who grew up in abject poverty. He's a coloured, if you want to use racial terms. He is the pain and empathy of black in his blood. He has the pain and empathy of white in his blood. He is the true South African. He is a colored. He grew up in poverty. He made bad choices when he was young, became a bank robber, was caught, convicted, went to jail, served his time, released with good behavior. In fact, his behavior in prison got him an early release and he reformed the prison set. So read his book. He stands by what he says. He took the job of the mayor of Central Karua with no salary, no guards, no drivers, no perks. He made promises of what he'd do in 100 days, and he delivered. He is a turnaround man. He is a man you should consider as a potential president of our country. And I know your heads are spinning right now, and you may think it's controversial, but there are many very good potential presidents of our country, some of whom are in this room, but why not Gaten McKenzie? Because why his constituency is tiny. And he's losing by-elections. Even, even where he's been elected into power, he's losing. There are 20 months to go. I'm just trying to open people's minds. There are a lot of very good options for this country. Some very good options. But we need the opposition to come together. And we need someone, as president, who can turn this country around in short order. I think you need to look for another president, Rob. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's go to Jenny over there. Sorry, you, we'll, get, we'll get you back in a moment. Go to Jenny, please. Um, Rob, you haven't mentioned the EFF, so I wondered what your thoughts were about them and their role in the future and going forward, especially in 2024. You mean those racist pricks? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> so the majority of South Africans know exactly what the EFF stand for. Violence, evil, destruction, racism, and a destruction of our economy. The majority of South Africans, the vast majority, are not stupid. I regret using that word I used in my first speech. What I really meant was why elect a government that you know is going to screw things up? Okay, that's what I really meant. But no one's going to vote for the EFF. Their ceiling is 12%. And if the EFF tie up with the ANC, the ANC will split. Then we'll see the good part of the ANC walk out. Forget the EFF. Danita, you had someone that I hijacked? Was it Dylan? Oh, John T. John T. Sachs. Um, Rob, you know, you mentioned the state owned enterprises are crumbling and they've been destroyed. But then at the end, you mentioned, you know, there's opportunities in the private sector. You're an entrepreneur. Where's the low hanging fruit? And you know, maybe it's time to get involved. Whew. Okay. I wasn't going to say this. There are very few state, thank you, John T. Uh, there are very few state-owned enterprises that are left standing. Okay? The ANC has broken, stolen, and destroyed them all. South African Airways, gone. Transnet, ruining the economy. Denel, I can go on and on. Prasa, which Horsi valiantly has tried to save, all destroyed. I'm in the aviation business. I'm dealing with Airports Company of South Africa. In eight years, in eight years, Airport Company of South Africa, in real terms, has made no profit and no growth. Okay? But salaries up 85%. Operating expenses up 51%. The management of AXA, ANC appointed, are doing very well, thank you very much. South Africa. And the regional airports, the non-Cape Town, Joburg, and Durban airports, are faring even worse. If you look at Bloemfontein Airport, it's as good as falling apart. No capital investment, no management. But AXA have a nice big head office at OR Tambo, flashy head office. This command and control Soviet lunacy that infects the ANC. Big head offices, we make all the decisions. 
whereas the management teams at all the regional airports who could be making the right decisions are unfunded, untrusted, and most of them are cadres anyway. I would like, like to make a public bid right now, Nick Ferguson and I, and our Cape Winelands Airport team, which is all ex AXA. We've got the best AXA people now working for us. I would like to make a public bid right now of two billion rand for South Africans' regional airports. Uppington, George, Port Elizabeth, etc. And, and Nick and I and our team will invest heavily in improving them and turning them into profitable, successful businesses. Just say that slowly. You've just sat here and said you're going to make a two billion rand offer right now, for the crappy publicly. airports that are out in the regions. Well, they won't be crappy if we... They are at the moment, though. They are at the moment. So, AXA is going to destroy them. The ANC are going to destroy these airports, okay? Our whole logistics... Uh, uh, all our logistics in South Africa is falling apart thanks to the ANC. We're prepared to make a bid for the AXA regional airports, 2 billion rand, and invest heavily in their future. And actually, we already have the support of the PIC. I take my hat off to Franz Bellany, Kusim... You introduced me to him, and he said that might be a very good idea. So I'm happy to leave the PIC in for 20%, and AXA could even stay in, in for minority, but not have any touch on control of the business. Okay? How's that? That's pretty cool. <laughs> I've got to say something about my partner, Nick Ferguson. After Biz News 1.0, <laughs> he and Hans Otterling, two of my best friends that I'm in business with, who's our businesses were badly affected by, by my speech. They didn't blink. They stuck by me as friends and said, let's just face what we have to face and keep on rocking. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Hans. Thank you, Rob, and uh, Dylan McKenzie, in case you don't know. <laughs> but Rob, you alluded to the 15 principles, um, and I know you've been focused on the blockchain. You've got a blockchain business. And you've always been wanting to build a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization. Can you touch on that and what the subscription rate to your 15 principles, for lack of a better word, on subscription? But if you can touch on that and, and the DAO itself, and so where are you going with it? <laughs> I think I might have mentioned this in a chat we had earlier, but there's blockchain, which is a base technology. Out of blockchain comes crypto and that amazing presentation last night that I missed because I was too tired, the Marcy presentation. So out of blockchain comes crypto, NFTs, and DAOs, Decentralized Autonomous Organization, all run on the blockchain. And I had this mad idea when I was backing uh, Cape Independence. And the main reason I back it is just to piss off the ANC, to show them this province is well run, and you guys can't run a piss up in a brewery. So, you know, wouldn't it be nice? But I had an idea. Instead of having a country based on territory, why not have a country based on principles, on characteristics, on good people? Why not have five to six million people that belong to a tribe, a nation, a membership country that doesn't necessarily belong to a territory? These are good people that believe in the same things, that pass the goodness forward, that help others and that help each other. And my idea came by creating a DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization, based on the blockchain, and issuing holographic NFT passports. Now, would that be cool? And I was thinking of it for the Western Cape. But now I'm thinking, why don't we get all the decent people in South Africa just to sign up to join this non-country country and leapfrog these idiots in the ANC and create a country outside of the ANC. We can start with South Africans and friends of South Africa and issue passports. And I have a feeling that that NFT holographic passport that you hold that is the new South Africa could be very valuable. Could get you benefits, could get you visas for countries that accept it. Rwanda will probably say, yep, these principles are correct. Anyone that has this new South Africa dot org, new South Africa dot org, go on the website, put in your email addresses. New South Africa dot org. And form a new country. And who knows? We may have 
30 million South Africans signing up for it, which will be almost double the number of people that voted in the last election. And then we have a country bigger than <laughs> the mess the ANC is trying to create. Yeah, it, it, it's so interesting because you can almost feel, and if, uh, if the microphones are in people's hands, that's great. Um, but, it, but it's almost like a lot of what's been coming through here on the sidelines of this conference is, hey, the world is changing, and especially Stafford last night. And it's changing in ways that we cannot conceive today. So we need to look for crazy ideas, which, which appear crazy today. You know, Steve Jobs, here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the oddballs. We, all, we know all about that at Biz News. Um, Clive? Is that Rory? Uh, hey, Rory? Very soon, I think uh, they've forgotten the fader. Colin? You know the on button, that green button? <laughs> Rob, so you've partly answered my question. My name's Rory, by the way. Given your high road, I, and I'm not sure whether you're being humble, so if that high road 2024 situation materializes, would you consider a position in such a cabinet? No. And, and if absolutely so, Absolutely not. Well, there's absolutely the answer. Absolutely not. I, the, you know, I've always said if you're studying political science at university, you're a complete waste of time. You know, it is a waste of time. We don't need more political scientists. I don't like politics. I am a libertarian. I believe in tiny government. Okay? And I have grudging respect for certain politicians because I just don't know how the hell they do it. But I'm not very good at sitting in meetings for longer than 30 minutes, listening to people state the obvious committee meetings, I just, I would be a pain in the ass. You wouldn't want me as a politician. The answer is no, and a flat no, despite, John T, what you were trying to wind me up during golf yesterday. <laughs> Who's got the next, micro next microphone? No, no more questions. No more questions for Rob Herzog. Come on, oh, can't one. be. Here we go. There are two on this side. Come on, push me and under one the bus. There. Let's Someone go. Someone push Hi. me under the bus. Linda here. Um, listening to some of the people that you mention for big positions in the government, that sounds great, but my query would be, surely if you choose a president, you need somebody this time around with a huge amount of experience. So great to have the personality, and I understand your theory behind Gate and McKenzie, but should we not really look for somebody this time who has lots of experience to actually run something, make it work? So that's, you're absolutely right. We absolutely need someone with the right experience. But the right experience for this moment we're in right now is a turnaround expert. Someone that has, owes no favors for anyone. Okay, I offered to donate to the Patriotic Alliance. I give money to the DA, Action SA, Afri Forum, um, in Institute of Race Relations, Daily Friend, and I offered to give money to the Patriotic Alliance, and they said no. There isn't a button to donate on their website. And you know why? Because they don't take money where they have to owe people favors. And I said, well, I don't want any favors. They said, regardless, not taking your money. So they are principled, honest, and we need a turnaround expert. We need someone that can just slice the evil out of all levels of government and turn this country around. Gayton McKenzie is a businessman. He's a decision maker. He's honest. He's principled. And remember I said my hypothetical president. There are a lot of people that can do the job. Musi Maimani can do it. John Steenhuisen can definitely do it. Herman Mashaba can do it. We've got a lot of great potential presidents and I just gave you a hypothetical one who I think is a revelation and you should consider. I'm not saying there's only one, but we need experience. We actually need business people in government and not politicians, is my view. But uh, I would you, say that, wouldn't I? If you go onto the uh, Business TV channel, you'll see the interview with Musi where he has thrown his hat in the ring. He is saying he... He yeah. wants to be president. Lucy must step up. I think he is going to announce something very soon, but we need him in the game as soon as possible. Good guy. Dirk. Guys, thank you very much. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you very much for your courage in speaking out. Just one little thing I want to ask is if there's a place on the cabinet for Trevor Noah. 
<laughs> you know, I'd like to know if Trevor Noah writes his own gags or someone writes them for him. Um, probably not. <laughs> Andrew, in the front, last question. Okay, last but one. It's, there's one more there, Danita, and then in the middle there, Clive. Yeah. Yeah, my question was partly answered by the, um, or asked by the previous um, respondent. Uh, because at the end of the day, ideas are great. You know, as we know in business, it's easy to, to create a picture, but implementation is what it's all about. Um, we don't have a lot of time, um, and I think uh, it's important that we identify the right person. Uh, egos, unfortunately, are a hum human characteristic, and I think it's going to be very difficult to find somebody who's prepared to bury their ego. But I do believe we have to find the right person to, re to lead this rainbow coalition. Now, I think that's the urgency. Somebody without an ego and somebody who has um, credibility. So who would that person be? Somebody without an ego, somebody with experience, somebody with credibility. There are 10,000 people in South Africa that can do the job, but not one of them is in the current government. Final question. Good morning, morning, morning. Uh, name is Rory as well, so <laughs> going to have to partner on the piggyback of that one. I've got a quick question for you, Rob. Um, touching on the base of your raising funds for the $5,000 from chaps abroad, youngsters, bullies, regardless. Do you have a structure in place at the moment? Because if you guys manage to come up with 120 names in the space of a short flight, imagine if there was a team or a structure in place that can literally just take an hour of their day, less 20 minutes, group, and then start raising that capital, putting it in a fund, and then delegating it when it's needed. <laughs> I wish I did have help. I wish I did have a team. But speak to Dylan McKenzie here. I have a family no one knows about of 4,500 people called Smutby. That's its name. You saw it on Dylan's hat in the Gulf. And I want to shout out to my Smutby brothers and sisters because they step up, help, volunteer, pass the goodness forward with no ask for anything in return. And they are the ones that are going to help me do it. But all of you in the room could send me or send Dylan <laughs> names of people here and overseas, who would be prepared to write a five thousand dollar, one hundred thousand rand check for the opposition, and we'll work out a way to do it that is legal, and that is effective, and that helps us achieve our goals. So thank you for asking that. And I want to just say one thing before we wrap up. Ons for the South Africa. Let's do everything we can individually to turn this country around and make it the great country we deserve to be. Thank you, everybody. Well, you obviously listened to what I was saying on the Swiss story before, because it is now exactly bang on the time. Rob Hersoff, blessed by our people, cursed by our leaders. Let's go forward. Thank you.